about what we were going to do today and I think it's going to be a very enjoyable uh, class. A lot of activity around here because the weather's been bad doesn't mean we haven't been super busy so there's a lot of activity with dogs leaving, dogs coming and all that stuff. Um, there's been some really memorable kind of events that have gone on. Some very positive and some very 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 sad. That kind of started me thinking about a question that I think everybody needs to ask themselves. Could your dog be easily placed if you couldn't keep him? In teaching a child as they grow, your job is to teach them to be able to contribute in a society, not be dependent on you to be independent, to be able to move out on their own or with somebody and be able to function independently. That's your responsibility as a parent. Well, as a dog owner, some people just selfishly allow the dog to be anything they want it to be and then through truly no fault of the dog's own, things happen. At that point, they basically, in many cases, signed the dog's death warrant. Now, sadly, over the last three weeks, I've had that happen over and over and over again. It makes me sick. So, I'm gonna, I, we won't get the dogs out, but we have one dog that's boarded. The guy came for training seven or eight years ago. The dog was crazy. The guy liked her that way. We actually, driving, found the dog on a road one time, took it back home, and oh yeah, she's always running out the door. Oh yeah, she's just a happy girl. No thought to the dog's safety, just we really selfishly enjoy how happy this dog is. I got a call just after Christmas that the um, water pipes had burst in his small home and he had to get out of there so we've had the dog in the kennel. The day he dropped her off, I said, or he said, she's still crazy. I said, yeah, but you like her that way, don't you? Oh, I sure do. I said, well, as long as it doesn't bother you, I guess it doesn't bother me. They ended up condemning his home, and now he's found a place for him, but at 11 years old, guess what? Now we're looking for a home. to a dog that will not walk on a lead, jumps all over, um, bolts away, happy, sweet. That is a death warrant. We had another one, came here. It had been through four homes in the last six months. Wanted to be a service dog because they were getting kicked out of where they were gonna live if they kept the dog. It's to be a service dog, not for a, an adult, but for a child. After I had the dog a little while here, it was very obvious we were not going to bring that down, dog down to where it accepted limits at all. It broke a door out of my kennel. It broke a number of big snaps. If it got loose, it was just abs. It tore the siding off the outside of the building. It was so desperate to be near a person. 
I wrote to the woman and I said, this dog will never be a service dog. She said, well, I didn't want much. I just want a dog that would alert if the child fell on the playground, go and get somebody who the dog can be able to tell whether it's a good person or a bad person and go get help. Um, I want the dog to be protective, but I don't want it to go after the neighbors. I want the dog to be able to alert the child if somebody's in the home or there's a fire, but I don't want the dog to bark unless there's something. And I wrote, and I said to her, you want Lassie? And she started telling me what I didn't know. And I said, I can't help you. You need to come get the dog. The only reason the dog didn't make it after a whole month of work was that I mean to it. So they came and got the dog, but they can't take it to their house, so it's going to her mother's. That's a death warrant. We have a dog that was raised, cute little dog, two years old, raised on a farm, six kids. Busy, 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 busy. No matter what we do, chaos causes that dog to go into a tailspin. Who do you place it with? I'm probably going to put her down. Nobody could have that in their home. Death warrant. We had a cute little dog that another rescue contacted me about. Nice little dog. He had a history. Little tough guy. And he'd been here probably a year. We had no problem with him. You had to get on him sometimes. But he was a great little dog. Worked hard. He knew all the commands. Nice couple that have had four terriers from here. Came and adopted him. He was perfect. They spent the first month absolutely sticking with everything. And then they took the cucumber off. They detached him from a line. They loved him. And he bit the guy twice. He ended up getting put down. He had been trained with food. He was so obsessed with food. So when food was involved, it was his food. It was a death warrant. It's been really, really an emotional kind of roller coaster because we end up looking at Kate. Go over to Kate. Kate's a dog that, not classic rescue, but she was purchased, wasn't the right dog, came here as a young dog. So she's never known any other really lifestyle except this. Other than stealing the other dog's rugs, she's a pretty darn good dog. She would be able to be placed in another home. Diva. She drives Sue crazy sometimes. But Diva herself is a delightful little dog that put in a home where they didn't want to train Diva would be the perfect little companion, wouldn't she? Sue just enjoys coming down to class, and the frustration is Diva doesn't want to be trained. Sue comes here for entertainment. She could leave Diva home and work a different dog and have a good time. Kona. I was contacted by Kona's owner and she had this 10-month-old German Shepherd she needed to find a home for. Now, when we talk about training, we talk about the three pieces of a good dog. Walking on the lead is certainly one. Handling is just as important as walking on a lead. Patience is the most important thing of all. So when she arrived with Kona, 
The dog had been tied and limited. The dog did know how to be handled. What the dog didn't know was how to walk on a lead. So every time I talk to Nancy, I tell her that Kona ran away and she no longer has a dog. So that is just one awesome dog. His other big problem is he's now just about 11, 12 months old. He's a pain in the neck. He's that 20-year-old young guy who thinks he can take on the world. He'll get over that. He could be placed in a home. Hamlet. There was a time that Hamlet could not have been placed in a home. But Kathy has been working so hard. At this point, Hamlet has a positive future. So even if Kathy and her husband decided to pick up and go to Europe for six months, Hamlet could go into someone's home and be a good dog, couldn't he? That's his insurance. That's what keeps a dog safe. Now we move over here to Miss Mary. Mary was always raised right, even the young woman that had her. Raised her living with a bunny. I mean, what a phenomenal thing for that dog. There's been a lot of people that have liked Mary. I have turned down, I can't tell you how many homes for that dog. Because I was waiting for the perfect home. The perfect owner. One that thought very much like Mary. Now, Matthew can handle a bunny, right? <laughs> Rather not. <laughs> but it's very important that the dog be raised and handled in a way that doesn't limit their future. Because in our world, we never ever know exactly what's happening tomorrow. I had a little dog one time that the people did go to Europe for six months. They boarded the dog for six months. When, when she um, dropped the dog off, <clears throat> it was a wimpy, I had always groomed the dog. It was a wimpy, needy little dog that wanted to be held on mama's lap because it was afraid of everything. By the time they came back, oh, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to McNally. By the time we came back, or they came back, this dog was an independent dog that would play with other dogs. It was fine. Took the dog home, paid the big board bill, took the dog home, and within a month gave it away because she wanted the dog to be needy and dependent. But she put the dog on hold, expecting the dog to just be the same when she came back. She dumped the dog. But people need to be needed. There's a lot of nurses that have that. They need to be needed. And they make, not just nurses, but there's a lot of people that make the dog dependent because the dog loves them then and oh, and can't get away. <laughs> That's not normal. McNally, we all know her story. It's taken a long time to get her to begin to have a brain. That's okay, Julia needed a lot of education. Yeah, I did. <laughs> so, Julia is the one that had to learn. McNally's fine, just like Mary. Mary's fine. It's the people that get the dog, that crawl around on the floor, hug them, and say, oh, aren't you wonderful, that cause the dog to fail. I love that dog too much for that. Over here, you don't see him much. Actually, he's a really good dog. He, um, he's kind of out of his comfort zone. This is another owner that has enough respect for the dog to do what the dog needs, not what they need. This is a Finnish champion. Wonderful dog. He's sired some litters of puppies. He's never seen, I mean, he's never really lived in a home. 
He's been that show dog that walked in there. He's a grand champion, which is he, it's above just champion. Powerful dog. He could go in there and spar with the best of them. But you know what? When that beauty contest phase of your life is done, uh, you got to find another occupation, don't you? So if you phrase this dog to challenge every dog that comes near you, go in and pee on everything because it's yours, Mark, to take charge of every situation, to be ready to meet any challenge, how do you go into a home and be sweet? Pretty much what you're dealing with with Lucy. Okay. So this dog was raised in a kennel and he was taken care of. He had everything he needed, but he had, didn't have the education to do a second occupation. He only knew what it was like to go in there and take charge. Well, instead of just, the guy lives in Washington, he just bought 10 acres in the country, he's got a kennel, He's paying for the dog to be here. He's been here since June. We haven't had him around a lot of dogs because we wanted the training set before we started mixing him in with other dogs. Because if he goes in cold, that means he's trying to learn in the middle of chaos. You can't. You'll never get peace out of chaos unless there's somebody that takes charge. So Kodiak, good boy... He's a little out of his comfort zone here with all these dogs in here. For that big male Airedale to lie down with all these dogs in here, just like the Great Dane. They go into the show ring. Kodiak, settle. Just give him a little bit, Carolyn. Settle. He knows what it means, but it's difficult. He's always been the top guy. That dog will be secure. He'll be able to do either one. Now a dog like this will go in and he will perform any kind of any kind of performance with attitude and flash. So everything he does is going to have a little more attitude. It's beautiful. But if that's the only thing you develop, you got a problem, right, Julia? Right. He's got a secure future. He would be able to be placed, especially if he were neutered. He's a whole male. Hey, and we have had a dog in heat in here this week. <laughs> this is tough. <laughs> Who do we Good have salad. over here? We have, of course, Otis. Now, Otis came as a baby. He was going to be a show dog. Julie's never had a show dog before. Julie's Great Danes have always been raised to be pets. I told her when he was eight weeks old, this is a different ball game. And bless her heart, she didn't go away. She came back. So Julie has had the most difficult situation of all where she's developing a big attitude but keeping respect. It's really difficult, isn't it? Yes. It's much easier when the dog lives in the kennel and then we can take it out of him. It's hard when you're living where he goes out and he's the toughest guy in the sky and then he comes back to the other Great Dane and he wants to do the same thing and you're correcting him for it. That's tough. But you can look at the other side of it now and say, I did it. So now you become a mentor for other people who are dealing with the same thing. Hey. Very good. Lucy. She was raised before Chris got her to be a wild and crazy guy. And that's what somebody took the dog in their home and said they wanted. Then when she got a little size to her, 
She got faster. She got quicker. Ah, uh, that wasn't so fun to live with anymore. So her imprinting was that she was to be wild and happy. Had Chris not been the person she is, had this dog not had a grandchild that you didn't allow this dog to bully, this dog would have had a death warrant. Because you've really been through a lot with her. You've learned a lot. She's still a pain in the neck, isn't she? She's still young. So until they're about a good year and a half old, they don't have a brain. When dogs become about a year and a half old, as far as I'm concerned, they're about a 25-year-old young person. At that point, they better start thinking about a career. Terriers tend to take till they're 30, and that would be about two years old. The rest of them catch on quicker. <laughs> Buddy, even though he's a rescue dog, he was never raised to be challenging and ugly about stuff. He does just enough stuff wrong to keep Colleen sharp, to keep her coming back. But there's been not one day since I first met Buddy, Colleen, um, Buddy and Colleen. How long ago was that? Three years. Over three years. Yeah. Not one day has this dog ever been in danger of losing his home. But if he did lose his home, he could be easily placed, couldn't he? I hope so. Oh, that, what real damage does he cost? None. Is he safe with kids? Yes. I mean, good kids. Can you take him places? Is he patient? Yes. I would say you've probably done a pretty good job of making him adaptable. And that truly is the key. You know, we can't selfishly train the dog just for what we want them to do and then say, well, this isn't working, bye. You did it. I mean, not, not you, but... Cooper, what a horrible dog. Man, that dog's in danger, isn't he? Not. Nancy was in class last night, and Cooper was afraid. He didn't want to go out there in front of all his friends and have to work. He's been off for five weeks, lazy butt. Now, if you've been on vacation for five weeks, and they were asking you to come back and get right to work. Not. You would come back, you'd want to talk about all you did, you'd want to visit your friends, you're happy to see them. We can't be critical of that dog because all it took was me taking the dog away from Nancy and saying, get your butt over here, go to work. He was perfect. Because we've also taken time off. Now, it's interesting with Petey over here, and you've seen her grow up. She was here at eight weeks old and learned all the basics. She went home. And if a person is struggling with situations in their life, and they are, excuse me, they are struggling the dog has a hard time seeing them as in charge or a leader. If your leader is lacking in confidence or knowledge or ability, you will challenge them. Now bless this woman's heart. First of all, she had me start the dog. So the dog was here for two months, and it was started right. I started her just like every other service dog would be started. Of course, I started all my dogs like other service dogs, so the dog knew nothing else. The dog went home for a while, and there were struggles. The dog wasn't getting much more than being tied and then freed him out in the backyard. So 
she had come to class a little bit, but when you live alone, it's very difficult to manage it all if you're struggling yourself. So it was decided that Miss Petey would come back. She needed a break. Picked her up. She was better. We worked her. Okay. It was decided that although she's not a full-fledged service dog, this dog needs to do some tasks that are service dog related. Now there are people who are wonderful dog owners, but they're not good trainers. To cut down on the frustration, to cut down on basically some anger, some inconsistency, Petey is staying here, Kathy is working Petey, and Kathy and Petey's owner are working together to get the focus off Carolyn and I. Now, as I told her when she took the dog home in the first place, until this dog is a year and a half old, it will not have a brain. It still needs programming. It needs input. She'd been imprinted. She'd been conditioned, but she needed an education. There's another three. The imprinting is the first concepts. The conditioning is making those concepts normal. Training is the education, puts it to use. What you're going to see here is when this dog eventually is mature, two years old, this is going to be a spectacular dog. Now it's kind of interesting because Kathy normally walks a little slower, Petey's mom works fast. The dog needs to learn to work both because what she was getting from that very fast walk was a dog that was busier. So, the match with Kathy, Kathy knows how to train this dog. This would be a perfect dog for Kathy. But because of Kathy's knowledge, she doesn't even have a dog right now. One day she will. But because of Kathy's knowledge, she can take that knowledge and help somebody else not sign a dog's death warrant. Now, not that this dog was going to, I mean, I'd have taken this dog in a second. But it's been a very, very interesting holiday season. Sadly, I've had to make some really tough decisions. And there's dogs that'll not be around long. But when I look around this room at the dogs who will, wow. That's how dog training should be seen, I believe. Anyway, so other than that, this is gonna be a really fun year, isn't it? <laughs> it's just been it's just been a real interesting time, so thank you very much. I hope I hope this makes sense. But truly, training your dog as if you're training it for someone else is a very important concept.